Hi, I'm John Wilder, historian for Aleppo Shrine, and uh, I'm joined today with Keith McKinnon, our, one of our great uh, local Masonic historians. Um, I brought you a piece today that I acquired just recently. I had seen one once, I believe, when I was touring the Grand Lodge of Tennessee down in their vaults, and uh, I've always really liked the piece, and I had the opportunity to acquire one recently, so uh, I scooped it up. This is a uh, chapeau case um, for the Knights Templar Commandery. I know that it is a uh, chapeau case because the seller did have the original chapeau that went with it. Unfortunately, um, he and I didn't quite agree on the price of that, and he wanted to sell them separately. Um, this is a uh, made of tin, and it's unfortunately there's some damage here, but uh, you can still see the blacking and the uh, detail in done in gold. Uh, this was a process called Japanning, uh, which was popular in the Victorian era. Um, if you open it up, it's got a little latch here, a heavy br brass handle. It comes down and you have a compartment for your chapeau, perhaps your gloves, your sword belt. And uh, Keith and I were talking about the error on this, and I'm thinking that it's probably from maybe before the Civil War. Uh, you saw a lot of these that were made by um, similar to ones that were made for the military, um, because uh, early 1800s uh, went to the, uh, the bicorn um, type uh, headwear. Um, and looking at the chapeau that was originally in this and looking at photographic evidence, um, I would think it's, it's pre-Civil War. Um, from a time before the commandery wore frock coats, you had a standard um, dress suit jacket and wore your baldric uh, sword and chapeau and apron just over that. You didn't have a separate uniform. So I think it fits with that, but uh, I know you, you had some thoughts on it as well, Keith. Well, first of all, it's made by a tinware maker. Uh, it's not handmade, so uh, there were probably a number of these that were probably made uh, because it's, it's, it is very well made, so it is definitely a tinware maker. Uh, tinware makers uh, basically made all types of different products out of tin. Uh, for a variety of different uh, businesses and fraternities. Um, now, I've only seen four tin chapeau holders in my lifetime. Uh, two were at auction, uh, one on eBay, and one at a Masonic building. This actually makes my fifth and uh, only my second one I've ever seen firsthand. Um, though these Cases I have seen date back to as early as the 1820s uh, for military uh, individuals who wore chapeaus, but a different type of style of chapeau than what we wear in the commandery, of course. Um, their chapeau would almost take up the entire case itself. Uh, and then a lot of them have come up on auction that have been preserved since the 1820s and 30s, and they have the tin chapeau cases. Um, but yes, I would say this is probably pre-Civil pre, pre -Civil War. Um, the ones that I have seen uh, were usually uh, done with the individual's name in a gold leaf and perhaps the command you emblem on it. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't, but uh, if John's going to keep it uh, for his own personal collection, I don't see why someone couldn't add that little bit of art well, uh, to the case. Un unfortunately, I, I did try to jam my chapeau that I wear, and unfortunately I have a rather large head and it's just slightly too big. So I may, it may be worth having a custom chapeau made just to fit. <laughs> um, chapeau cases came in a couple of different uh, styles. Uh, down in Attleboro, they have a beautiful composite one uh, that was, as John mentioned, Japanese lacquered, uh, which is basically painted black and then multiple coats of lacquer put over it to make it a hard shell. Uh, that one opened up from its side. That one dated probably about 1860, 1880s. Then you have the thin leather ones that came out, uh, which were very popular. And most of those I have seen in, 
in armories and whatnot. But the tinware, you know, I would highly suggest each and every one of you, and don't go around destroying your building and breaking into closets and whatnot. That's not what I'm asking you to do. But in some of the bigger buildings that have larger command trees, I wouldn't be surprised that you might find yeah. one of these. Um, the old suitcases and whatnot, uh, days gone by. They're not used anymore. Um, so you might have a whole closet full of these old Comanche suitcases and stuff. And you never know, you might find one of these tin chapeau cases in there. So, you know, do some digging around your building, but be respective of the building. Uh, ask always first. Um, and hey, if you do find something like this, get others involved. The more that know about a piece of history like this, the better that we can preserve this fragile fabric of our past. Thank you, John. Thank you, Keith. And uh, I think you mentioned a, a good thing where you know, may have to do a future video on the different types of suitcases that were worn, I mean, uh, used, because uh, I've seen them in Commander and I've even got some from the Shrine that are quite interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you for uh, your insight on this, and I'm uh, proud to be the caretaker of this. Um, so if you like what you see, remember to uh, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.